Hey folks, how's it going? Rob Avis here. I'm just about to get my compost pile all tuned up for spring. We've been piling all sorts of rabbit manure in there and so I'm gonna tear it down and I'll probably speed the film up so you don't have to watch it in slow-mo. But before we do, I wanna talk a little bit about some of the tools that we're gonna be using and some of the things that we do to make sure that our pile is actually working the way that we want it to. So, one of the tools that I highly recommend folks get if they're gonna get into composting is this Rio Temp thermometer. They're not inexpensive, but um, they have a very quick acting tip, so you get a very accurate, quick temperature read. They've got a long probe in here, which will give you a sense of whether your pile is heating up. And if we're going to build an aerobic compost pile, we want to make sure that our pile is going to have the right temperature, which is generally going to be between 50 and 60 degrees Celsius. So um, we use this to determine if the ingredients in our pile are suitable because it's heating up. It will also tell us if the ingredients are too hot, too much nitrogen because it'll overheat. And uh, it also gives us clues with regards to how quickly it heats up uh, once we turn it. So the piles are not heating up and I know there's more than enough nitrogen in there because we've been putting all of this rabbit manure in and so I'm suspecting that it's deficient in oxygen and it might just need a better mix. So we might not have a good mix of the nitrogen carbon combinations which is preventing it from properly heating up. So let's uh, flip the pile. We'll maybe stop the camera a couple of times through the flip so that we can inspect what the material actually looks like and get a sense of what we're doing right or wrong. And then we're gonna put the pile back together and hopefully it cooks really quickly so that we've got a couple of months to let it cure and then we can apply it towards the end of the growing season. So this is something real cool. I've never seen this before. We've got all these little mushrooms poking through the compost and all this mycelium. I've never seen such an early pile sprouting this much fungus. It's unbelievable. It's all throughout the pile. And so the pile is basically made out of straw, rabbit droppings and urine obviously. And then we used a bunch of pellets to absorb their urine, which I think is making the pile a bit anaerobic unfortunately which is why it's such a good thing that we're putting oxygen in. So let's keep taking the pile apart. We're gonna mix it up and then put it back in. So I'm pretty happy with the moisture level in the compost. It um, doesn't actually smell too bad. There's definitely parts of it that have gone anaerobic. I'm getting the sense now that it might be a bit nitrogen deficient, I'm not sure. But uh, I'm gonna put it all back together now. So I'm gonna put it back into the compost bin. Make sure that I'm fluffing it. You'll notice that when I'm using the, uh, the pitchfork that I'm really mixing it up and making sure there's lots of oxygen amongst all the particles. And then as we fill it back up again, I'm gonna put the boards in and then we will throw the thermometer back in and watch what happens over the next couple days and see if we get some heat. If not, because the moisture's right, there's definitely enough carbon, then I'll start adding some more nitrogen, possibly food scraps or whatever other nitrogen I've got around. It could be more manure from the bunnies. We'll just have to see how that goes.
All right, so we've aerated the compost. It's all back in the bin now. You'll notice that it's a bit taller than when we started because we've added air to it. I'm gonna put the temperature probe back in and I'll put a link to this temperature probe in the show notes below if you wanna buy it for yourself. It's a non-affiliate link. I don't have any affiliates with Rio Temp, so um, that's great. And uh, right now it's reading about 20 degrees Celsius or about uh, 65 degrees Fahrenheit. And so let's get first start. We'll see where it is in a few days. And if we need to add some more nitrogen, we will. General rule of thumb for good garden compost is you want to use a carbon to nitrogen ratio of about 30 to one. So 30 parts carbon to one part nitrogen all the way up to about 50 to one, 50 parts carbon to one part nitrogen. I like to make compost piles that are slightly more carbon rich because there's less work involved. So I'm, I'm a bigger fan of a slower cook because it means I've got to turn it a lot less. And you see how much work I put into it. This is my CrossFit exercise for the day. Um, and so if you're wondering what a carbon to nitrogen ratio is, just look it up on YouTube or Google, you'll find it. Um, it's basically just measuring the amount of carbon to the amount of nitrogen. And every different material has a different carbon to nitrogen ratio. For example, wood chips are usually in the neighborhood of 300 to 1 to 500 to 1 whereas uh, chicken manure is like two to one. And so anything below 30 to one, 30 parts carbon to one part nitrogen is considered hot. Anything above 30 to one is considered carbaceous. And wood chips obviously are very carbaceous in the 500 to one. One of the reasons we want a lot of carbon in our piles is so that we can get fungally dominant piles because usually our soils are deficient in fungi because of the disturbance that we put onto our garden soil. So having a little more fungi is a good thing. Hope you found that interesting guys. I'll do another video a little bit later, a few more weeks from now and we'll come back and have a look at this compost pile. And uh, if you find these videos insightful and there's good information in there for you and you want to support the channel, right below is a link to buy our Verge t-shirts. And they're kind of funky sayings with a Verge logo on the back. And uh, it goes a long ways to making it worth our while to produce this content for you guys. Um, if you want to learn more about gardening, composting, resiliency, growing nutrient-dense food, I'll also leave a note uh, in, the, in the show notes below for our permaculture design course, which we teach once or twice a year. And we go through all of these types of systems and help people get up and running with their own urban or rural homesteads. Thanks so much, guys. We'll see you in the next video.